Hello, you guys, and welcome to this episode of the Appalachian History Detectives. We are on site, and today I have a very special guest. Come on over here, Dylan. Many of you guys probably seen Dylan in some videos that I've had in the past, and I'm going to introduce Mr. Dylan here. Dylan is a, uh, well, we call him our son now. Uh, we have fostered Dylan, and uh, now we have made him a permanent member of our family. And uh, this actually is going to lead to a an announcement by me for all my fans on the channel. Um, I have four kids in various ages. Dylan is now our youngest. He's mm -hmm. eight years old. And you're here to play basketball, right? Yeah. And basketball, his practices and games are on Saturdays, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, um, my wife and I, you know, this this uh, channel that I have, this uh, hobby that I have, started actually uh, at the request of my wife. Uh, we homeschool, and um, and my wife knows that I have a love and a passion for history, and um, you know, so teaching history was up to, was kind of she wanted me to be involved in that process. So I asked my son, my oldest son, Braden, who you guys have seen in past videos. What would make history interesting to him? And one of the comments was, you know, I don't like reading about it, Dad. So I tried to make history something that would be interactive and tangible. And actually, that was the genesis of this channel. I created it to be able to homeschool my kids. And um, I didn't anticipate it being successful. I didn't anticipate meeting the aqua sugar and I really appreciate everything he has done to help me build this channel but my channel has never intentionally been about metal detecting it's always been on my end trying to reveal tangible history and tangible history to young kids like Dylan and my kids so the announcement I'm going to make uh, with the addition of Dylan and the family um, this is probably going to be my last year doing these videos and my channel. Um, I've just got a lot more commitments now, and uh, and things are, are getting busy around the house, busier than I anticipated, because weekends are the only times I can really get out, because I work a real job, a full-time job. And, uh, and now, um, with four kids, and my wife and I splitting duties, going to and fro with them, and you guys, you parents know, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, um, my wife and I have determined that uh, this dig season will be it uh, for me. And I have, I have a lot of great permissions ahead of us. This is one of them. And, uh, and I'm excited to going into this dig season. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know that um, there will be an end of my channel. I'll leave it on YouTube. You guys can go back and watch all the videos you want, but I'm not uh, anticipating adding more videos to it beyond this dig season. And um, I know it's sad. It might be sad to some of you guys. Some of you guys might be happy about that. Um, but anyway, I've had fun. I hope you guys have had fun. And we're here, and I'm going to introduce uh, this property. Um, I have been doing some research on Christopher Sloanacre. Christopher Sloanacre was a uh, Revolutionary War patriot in Pennsylvania. He came down to this area out of Pennsylvania as a Quaker pacifist. And he came down here with Peter Hover. And Peter Hover, when he got down here uh, to avoid detection by the authorities, he changed his name to Peter Oates. And there's lots of Oates here. And some of my videos, um, I have done some videos on the Pioneer Oates family. Christopher Sloanacre, this is a Sloanacre farm. It's a huge farm. And there's a lot of potential here for a lot of probably old pioneer houses. Um, in fact, right up the valley there on the property, and this is going to be a future detection, um, I'm told that there was an old French and Indian fort up there. Now, it's only published in one book, so I don't know what kind of fort it was or even if it actually existed. So one of our 
one of our episodes is going to be going up there and trying to find that fort. This house doesn't look old. It is on the foundation of an older house built in the 1700s. And the house that was here in the 1700s, there was a chimney fire. The shingles were wood cedar shaped shingles and uh, the sparks from the chimney caught the shingles on fire and down went the house. And this was the old spring house to it. Now, Christopher Sloanacre was a German. I think he was uh, the second generation in America. And so this was built, this was handcrafted built by by the Germans and now I can't conclusively say that Christopher Sloanaker built this or if it was his family I do not know if this is Christopher Sloanaker's original house site I'm researching that so some of the videos that you're going to see this season will be me revealing different places where publications state his house stood but I thought I would start here on the Sloanaker farm got a good hit here and this is my very first plug I have not dug it yet but I'll let you hear it 25 26 now that could be aluminum because they just recently renovated that house and I see aluminum chips over there so that's what this could be but that is also in the coin range and that's deep that's showing about eight inches deep so we're gonna dig this right here There is writing on it. Is that up here? You guys can see it. I mean, it's a bell. I think this was a maybe a tag souvenir of. Okay, so it's a souvenir, it's a kid's souvenir. So our first artifact that we have found, Dylan, is a kid toy. So we'll clean that up. Right, we'll clean that up and we'll show it in the reveal at the end, won't we? The coins await. All right, I popped the plug. I thought it was a button, but I know it's not because it's got the screw tip here, I believe. But it doesn't mean that it can't be treasurable could have gone into a piece of furniture because we know this house burned down yeah I don't know what that is I'll have to clean that up take a look at it later now well, we want better treasure than that don't we older treasure than that Dylan are you cold a little, little. It's uh, it's freezing out here. It's probably around 32 degrees. So, Tony so said you might have to go sit in the truck for a little bit. All right, I popped the plug and pulled it out. I think it's going to be a part of an old rivet, but it is pewter, and I've never found a pewter piece of rivet. So I don't know if it is a rivet. And I don't think it is. See how brittle the edges are? Pewter does that. Okay, here it is. And there's a little bit of gilt on there. And I thought it was pewter because you can see the edge there is real brittle. But I don't believe it is pewter. And I believe this might be... Oops. I believe this could be a small hem weight. Could be a hem weight or an undergarment button. I think that's what it is. That's pretty cool. I already lost Dylan. He had to go sit in the car. It's cold out here. All right, let's keep going. All right, I popped the plug and pulled it out. I have not looked at it, but I'll let you see what it reads. Solid 1718. What is it, Dylan? Dylan decided to come out and join us again. He got warmed up. All right, Dylan, why don't you come over here? 
Why don't you come over here and try to pull some of this dirt off of here? Let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. Can't really take the Can't, off okay. Of the it looks like it. Boy, I don't know. It's brassy. Looks like a leaf. It look a leaf. Mm -hmm. A leaf of some sort. I think it does. All right, you guys. I cleaned this up the best I could. Pull it in screen here for you. You can see some clasps on the back of it right there. One right there. One right there. So the question is, how old is that? And what do you think it went to? It is brass. It's got a green patina on there. I think it's old. I think it's probably 1800s or uh, pre-1920. That's what I think. All right, I got a good hit here. I've been pulling a lot of aluminum out of the ground, haven't I? Mm -hmm. But I got a good hit here. 24, 25. Now that could be aluminum. But I'm a little bit further from the house there. And we're going to dig that up. And I'm going to ask Dylan to hold the camera. So Dylan, mm -hmm. hold the camera real tight. Now you can watch it right there. All right. Do we get it? Yeah, it's right in here. Now, when it's that close, that's not a good sign. Okay, I just found a coin. In that hole right there. Dylan was manning the camera, but the camera messed up, didn't it? Mm -hmm. So I pull out my phone. We're going to take a look at it. Oh, no. Okay, it's a Lincoln scent. So Dylan, you're you're one cent richer, buddy. Taco money, they call that. There we go. I thought we'll find some coins in this yard. Hopefully, they're about a hundred years older than that. Right. All right, Dylan and I are digging coins, aren't we? Uh -huh. But we also found a button right there, and we thought it was a coin, but it is a button in the midst of all these coins. And I told Dylan, it's metal. I told Dylan, I said, I think a clothesline might have sat here. And I'll let you see what this rings up. It's a four-hole button. I'll show you. Look, 2021. That's the same as a coin right there. So, this is our third button. Not bad. We're not finding old stuff, but we're finding stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes detecting fun, isn't it? Yeah. That we're finding stuff. And it's not all trash and pull tabs and bottle caps and pop tops. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> so, are you cold anymore? Not. not anymore. Starting to warm up. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Pop the plug, pulled it out, and it popped right out. And it's another button. And it is... It's got a king's crown on there. See that king's crown? You know, this might actually be an old button. Yeah, it's a two-piece button. It's got a king's crown on it. On the back, there is the shank. And this is an iron shank, so I don't think it's all that old, but it could be. It could be Civil War era. So we are finding buttons and modern coins, but that's okay. All right, I pulled this out of the hole, and believe it or not, this is probably the oldest thing I have found so far. But you can see the green patina right there, and I think that this might be the oldest thing I've found so far. It does have a design on it right there. So I will clean this up. It's very, very fragile. You can see it pulling away right there. All right.
right. It, it, I mean, it's decorative. You can see that right there. Don't know what it is, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this dry and I'll clean it up. I'll let you guys see it at the end. All right, haven't been filming, but we've been finding lots of coins, haven't we? Yep. Lots of coins. How many coins have we found so far? You don't know? We found over a dollar in coins. I'll show them to you. They're all modern. I told Dylan, I said, we'll dig them. And I'll give them to him. He'll buy a candy bar or something. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of all the coins, we found a button. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was a coin because it had that same signal, that same sound. And I told Dylan, I said, there's a coin spill here. There's lots of coins. And I said, let's go ahead and just dig them all up. But in the midst of them, I found a really cool button. And can you see that? I don't think it's old. Looks like it's got a design on there. It doesn't have a shank. So it's a the back pulled off of it. But it is a pretty button and we'll take it. Finding lots of coins. I told Dylan I think there was a clothesline that went through here. And uh, I've been finding buttons in here too. But I found another button. And I wanted to show you these because I found this kind of button before. And this is what is called a garment or undergarment button. All right, let's take a look. Okay, so I pulled this out of this hole. And I'll just tell you. I have found probably one to two dollars worth of clad coins in here. So I think that there was a a uh, clothesline pole here. We've been pulling lots of clad, huh, son? Uh -huh. Okay, well, let's look at this. This is what they call an undergarment button. A two-hole button which is an undergarment button. Okay. This is an old farmhouse. People lived here for generations and even centuries. And, and uh, you just gotta dig through. The ground is full of signals everywhere. But uh, we're finding stuff. And when you have, when you take kids out to detect, especially the little kids, um, you know, as long as you're finding stuff that interests them, that's fun. That's all that matters, right? Right, Dylan? All right, Dylan, what did we just find? Do you know what it is? A button. A button. All right, let's take a look. We just pulled, popped the hole, pulled it out. I thought it was going to be another clad coin, but it is a cool button. Look at that. Look at that. It's got an iron backing. So the shank is already rotted off. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. Uh, that, I mean, that could be old. That could be late 1800s. That could be period with the house that burned down. That's beautiful. Isn't that cool? All right, a little story here. You see the barn there in the distance. Some beautiful ponies. Uh, they're not horses. Well, that one might be a horse, but there's a couple ponies up there. They're smaller than horses. Uh, the landowner tells me that that barn, back in the 1940s, was blown away, completely blown away by a tornado. And I don't know if you could see the hilltops around here, but that peak right there, right there in the distance, it's about 21, 2200 feet in elevation. 
and the peaks go up higher than us all around us and so it's really odd to get a tornado in the mountains here in the Appalachians. It's very rare, but it does happen. And in this case, the valley, if you look here, the valley is nice and broad here. This is what they call uh, Ridge and Valley region of the Shenandoah. And, uh, and a, a tornado came right down the valley here and went right up there on the, onto that, uh, where that barn is and just blew that barn completely away. guys we're going to do a wrap up and uh i had some problems with my gopro so i gotta go home i gotta go take a look at that i don't know what the issue is with it so uh i probably lost a lot of video clippage on some of these fonts and by the time i found that out uh, thankfully i had my iphone with me i could uh use it but so some of these things you're going to see you want to see them i didn't show the dig I did show the dig, but I don't think it showed the dig on my iPhone. So let's take a look. We found a lot of great stuff. Okay, so here is the board. And look at all of these coins. Look at that. We got well over $2 there. These are all quarters. These are all dimes. These are all nickels. And these are all pennies. I haven't counted it at all. I know there's over $2 there. I, I've never been in a yard and found that many coins in any yard. Now, I found this little ring. And uh, I don't know. It's a little brass ring. I don't know what it goes to. It looks pretty small. I don't think it went on someone's hand. Um, I found this little league lapel pin and there's the back of it that came off there is another lapel pin there there's some fancy decoration i don't know what it goes to you saw me dig that up i found a pair of earrings and i don't know if they're silver or not i gotta get my hand out of the way i gotta clean these up i found a rivet there i found a hem weight there i found not sure what that is but I found a button there, a button there, a button there, a button there, and a button there. So we found one, two, three, four, five buttons. Found some fancy thing there, probably off of a necklace. That was the first thing I found. I had to clean that up. It is probably a, a penny one in there. I'd say one cent one in there. Then he found out the only thing I found here that was melted may, that may have indicated a fire is this big piece of lead there. Not sure what this is. I got to clean this up. It rang real high and it's heavy and it is solid brass. Then this really cool piece of artwork here it is metal and it is a. Uh, a weather vane and right here you can see where it went on something that's really cool isn't that pretty cool is that pretty cool and then we found a door strike i found a i think this is a buckle of some sort i don't think it's uh actually i don't think it is a buckle but it is a placard of some sort there's where it attached and the frame is very decorative and I'll clean that up and I'll get pictures at the end. So we did real well. Look at that. That's a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Did you have fun? Mm -hmm. Tell me, Dylan, what is your favorite thing on the board here? I don't know. You don't know. Mm -hmm. You don't know. You're just cold and you want to go home, huh? All right, you guys. Thank, thank you so much for joining us on this episode. I uh, We had a great time. I hope you guys had a fun time. We found a lot of stuff. We enjoyed digging all of it. I just really want it from the heart. I just want to really tell you guys I appreciate you guys being fans to my channel. And uh, again, this is going to be my last dig season. 
and then uh, we're going to go on to bigger and better things for now and i'm going to just concentrate on things with my family i uh i do have another channel i'll put a link i do um i collect trains i, I do in scale model train sets and i have another channel that i've never really developed and i probably will develop that and uh, i'll put a link up there you guys can check it out all my videos there are old and they're short it was the very first time i ever did anything on youtube and it was like eight years ago so you guys can go check that out i'll probably be doing some more uploads there and i'll probably segue over there because i can do i can do that channel from the comfort of my house and it doesn't uh, take up a lot of my weekends that i can devote to to my kids all right thank you guys for following us thank you for being on this hunt we'll catch you on the next one bye bye